Welcome to the Life's Twist Show with your hosts, Terry Robinson, Lance Conley, and Eric Harrison. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's everybody doing? This is Eric Harrison, and welcome to Life's Twist. Um, Man, we are, number one, I just want to take a moment to just thank everyone for their support, their overwhelming support over the last several weeks. We have gotten so many calls and emails and even hits on Facebook about some of the subjects that we've talked about, and we really, really appreciate you guys. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and and introduce my partners in crime. And the first guy that I'm going to introduce is um, this guy. He does so much for us. He does a lot of research for us. He goes in and, and, and finds all these great topics, and then we he begins to see exactly how it relates to the book and, and some of the other things that we do. And, and that's my man, Lance Conley. What's going on, Lance? Hey, good evening, Eric. Uh, just enjoying the weather out here in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine, my friend. I can only imagine. And then last yep. but not least, my, my main man, Terry. Terry, uh, you know, um, you know, I've known this guy for years, you know, and, 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 and man, he never ceases to amaze me with his insight and, and, and how he does things. So what's up, Terry? How you doing? Terry Robinson. I'm doing good. E, how you doing? How you doing, Lance? Good, good, Terry. How you doing? Yeah, but thanks for all the kind words. Ready to kick the day. Y'all. So well. Appreciate y'all. Yep. So I guess we, we're going to kind of jump right into it. Um, guys, I, I haven't even had a chance to tell you to this, but um, when I posted this out on Facebook, and I began to talk to people about the subject that, uh, you know, we're bringing, bringing forward today and, and, and how we're going to be talking about coaches and role models. Um, I got an overwhelming response. I mean, people were like, oh, my God, I need to hear about that, and I need to know more about that. And that is such a big-time subject. So, um, man, it, it's, it's something that is really prevalent in society today, and people really understand how important this is. So I'm going to let you guys get started in the conversation, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to you, Terry, and let you go ahead and get going. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, you know, obviously coaches are very instrumental in making us better people. I know uh, they're second to the parents, and sometimes they are the parents. In most cases, they are. And so without that, you know what I mean, it's going to be difficult, not just on the on the on the playing field, but outside of the playing field. I mean, it's always good to have somebody that that's a mentor, somebody that's been through something, somebody that has some experience that can help shape who you are, who you who you want to become. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have some good coaches, you know, along the way. I've also had some that wasn't <laughs> that weren't too good either, and so it can go either way. And um, I think a lot of times, you know, if you got a good coach. They, I mean, they're, they're going to they're gonna be there for you regardless. And uh, they're going to they're gonna teach you some life lessons. It's not just about athletics. So when I think of a good coach, that person is a coach not just in, in, in the game but outside of the game as well. So uh, that's how I feel about coaches. And like I said, coaches are instrumental. I mean, yeah, and, and, and they don't get the praise that they deserve because so many of them, they, they do way more than what – the average person thinks or knows. And if you if you've ever experienced a good coach, I mean, uh they they haven't sent. Exactly, exactly. I, I definitely agree. Terry, I, I, I got a little surprise for you, man. Uh not to interrupt the conversation right now, but um we have a guest caller right now. Um and it's somebody that, that that's um a very good friend of yours. Um so I'm going to bring him in right now, and Terry, you go ahead and start talking, man. Uh, uh, hello, caller. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good, good, good. Can, right. can, can you tell us? Can, can you can you let us know who you are? Because um, I think your boy Terry, he'd love to hear who you are. Yeah, this is Gerald Brantley. Um, everybody knows me as JB. I'm originally from Akron, Ohio. Live in Des Moines, Iowa. I've known Terry for. Quite some time, and Lance, 
uh, and we we have some some history. So uh, I I listened to last week's show. I couldn't call in, but I listened to the replay, and I, I was chomping at the bit to, to call in it, but it was it was a replay. So I, I talked to Terry <laughs> and said I had some some stuff I wanted to uh, contribute. And we want to hear what's up, JB. I'm glad you called in. <laughs> hey, JB. We ready to hear what you got to say. <laughs> well, yeah, you got I, and I'll jump brother. right in. I, I'll jump right in because uh, I, I got some clients I got to go see here a little later. But one of the things that, uh, about this uh, the uh, transitional stress uh, that I was telling Terry about that I wanted to talk about was I'm a veteran and. I'm also an athlete, and leaving high school to to make a transition from high school athlete uh, athletics to going into the military, and and having that uh, uh, combination or that that connection, the military and sports have a great connection. So when I went in, and I'm an athlete, so I, I played football, basketball, box, and I ran track. And when I ran track, I threw the hammer and did the high jump, two different field events, but I did them both. Um, that's as much of an athlete as I, I, I was. I boxed light heavyweight for the Army, uh, uh, played on the Arm, Army basketball team, played on the Army football team, and I got paid to do those things. And at one particular point, I was telling Terry, I, I actually ran in, a, in the Berlin Stadium where Jesse Owens and Hitler uh, the Olympic Stadium was our. We had a, a, a large track meet there, and we we were allowed to do those those type of things. But you also were still in the military. Now, where the the transitional stress came in was when you separate from the military, you also separate from your athletics at the same time. So there's no deprogramming or, or anything to, to that nature, but the stuff that you had to deal with coming up, growing and, and loving sports, and then finding an a, a outlet and a vehicle in the military is the similar is similar to going to college. I mean, we had large venues that we played in, lots of people. We had all of those things. We had all the accolades and the awards and, and all of that stuff that you get just like any other sport or any other event in college, high school, what have you, still long for that competition. So so when you separate from that, it's one of those things, how do, how do I deal with the separation? And, and of course, the military is going to tell you you can join the National Guard and, and whatnot and stay connected that way. But there's no real how do you deal with the separation of everything. And then when you get out of the military as an athlete, my first goal was to find something I could get right back into. So I started playing basketball here in here in Iowa, and I met Terry and a whole bunch of other basketball players. Mm. But, again, basketball wasn't my main thing, so I needed to find even more. So I started powerlifting. And, you know, so I started trying to feed my competition, uh, mm. uh, Jones, as much as wow. possible. Um, because I, I had that long desire to compete and defeat other people. You know, I, I ain't gonna lie, I wanted to win. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's you know, part of it. If, if, yeah. if you if you bench press, my bench press, the heaviest bench press I did was 720 pounds. So if I if I bench that, I know I could beat everybody in the gym. And Terry came mm-hmm. to some of my weightlifting meets actually, but that competition and drive also needs an outlet. Because eventually my body said, you ain't built to lift this all the time no more, and you're getting old. So what do you do? So you sink that into a business or you sink it into something that that fosters that competitive drive. And and I remember when I got out of the service, I got here, and I would get up early in the morning, put on my combat boots, put on my flat jacket, and I would go run. And I remember mm. running up a hill. I got to the hill, it's like 6.15 in the morning. Sun was coming up. I got to the top of the hill, and I said, why the hell am I doing this? I ain't in the Army no more. <laughs> you know, wow. I stopped running. I, I stopped running. I have not ran 
from anybody or for anybody ever since. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it was it was one of those things that just shut it. You know, it, the realization of okay, I don't have to do this anymore, but the desire to find something else to replace those things still remains. And that's where that, that transitional stress starts to become a, a, a real thing. How do you deal with that? How do you, you know, because there was no, it wasn't diagnosed, and I'm glad Terry coined this, transitional stress, because you don't know what it is. You know mm. you just have a longing to compete, a longing to, yes. to fit in exactly. and find out where I can find that same feeling and accolades and, 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 and things of that nature. So, you know, I transitioned to business and trying to win as many awards as I could as a businessman and mm-hmm. trying to, you know, so the, the competition and stuff still remains a driving force in the things I was doing back then, you know, even to and the you, point. And you, and you won some awards, my brother. I remember when you first got yeah. that $10 billion contract, and a week later another million dollars. I said, wait a minute. So not to cut yeah, you off, I, I was, hey. yeah, I was bored. I, I went to the White House twice and and two different presidents, and you know, so I, I've done some things and, and and was very happy at that. But I've also had some struggles, and mm. some of those struggles you can relate back to this this transitional stress and trying to find those things that can can ease that pain, if you will, because exactly. it is a pain. You know, yes. it's a pain that we don't recognize as being a, a physical pain or a mental pain, but it's there. And I think it's a combination of the two, mental and physical, because you, you need to feel, you need to feed the, the drive void, but then you need to feed the mental, I'm accomplishing something, and the, the, the myopic thing. You need to have that mm-hmm. thing that I could say, I did something, you know. Yes. And, and you're always trying to outdo yourself uh, as an athlete, your, your last game is your is your worst game. It's so mm-hmm. you're always trying to have the best game the next game. So right. anything you try to do after that is I'm trying to outdo myself from the last time. So even in after after school and after athletics is over, you're still searching for that thing, you know, that I can hang my hat on and say, see, I am somebody. I did accomplish mm-hmm. some stuff. And you're always looking for that. And I'm not necessarily saying that's wrong, but maybe because we have a, a, a vehicle now to start talking about this stuff, you know, because this is something I, I've talked to Terry at length, but this is the first time I ever told him this stuff, you know. Wow. It wasn't something I recognized. But, but listening to the show last week made me recognize, oh, okay, that's what happened. That was what mm-hmm. was going on back then. Now I have something that I can equate to what I was going through, and I'm sure there's other people out there that's dealing with the same thing. You know, exactly. that, that transitional stress is something that you never think about. It's just like uh, working with a, a, a person coming home from prison. There's a definite transitional stress that they would have. You know, exactly. coming home after 15 years in prison, there's a monumental transitional stress that's going to happen. And they have to adjust to something that went way faster than they're ever used to when you get back into society. Well, it's Mm. the same thing for people leaving college, military, anything. You still step into something that that is going faster than you're normal, than you're used to. You're used to structure, which is when when something's structured, it's it's slower because you can handle it. You know what you're doing. But when you jump into something that's unknown and it's moving, it's moving fast. So, and you guys know when you went from high school to college athletics, it went faster. Oh, it most was faster. Definitely. You most know, definitely. because everything was stepped up. So, you know, the structure changed, and you had to learn the structure. Once you learn the structure, it slows down, and now I can adapt and handle it. But once you add a new stressor to that, like you're going somewhere new. And, or the game is over for you. Now you have a whole new stressor that you got to go and learn. You got to learn the nuances, how to relax, how to how to deal with all of those things. And there was no vehicle to talk about that until now. So I applaud you guys for doing this because 
It, it lets a person, if they're willing to c- call in and talk and get this off their chest and out of their head, it's a, a way for someone to heal, to start to, you know, this, this conversation is cathartic for me because it helps me heal even though I'm 53. You know, I've been doing this a long time, but I've never got to talk about it like this. Wow. Wow. Well, brother, but, we're going to keep that vehicle uh, open for you. I'm sorry, guys. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Definitely, definitely. I, I just wanted to get uh, JB's thoughts on because he said a couple things earlier. Um, and it's nice to have you on, JB. We definitely appreciate yes, you, sir. you calling in. Um, you know, you, you said about competition and competing because that was such a big part, you know, the military, uh, boxing, weightlifting, business. Yeah. Um, and it is healthy because that's what drives it. But, you know, sometimes it can be unhealthy. And how were you able to shut that on and off, or were you able to? Because I know that's something I definitely struggled with, that I found myself competing in situations I didn't necessarily need to compete, but it's just, you know, it's just a part of you. How were you able to, to do that, to, to be able to shut well, it off and shut it on? I turned it more into a in, – in this, you know, there's no right or wrong in this yet because we're still mm-hmm. – this is new. So – I'm going to say it this way. I turned it into an internal game for me. It was an internal game. So, so honestly, when I went to a business meeting, I was trying to win. When I competed, yeah. I was trying to win. When I was in the dating world, I was trying to win. So it didn't turn off until I matured enough to say, this is wearing me out. <laughs> you know, this is, <laughs> to try to keep up with all of this is killing me, you know, because I, I, I'm just tired. So at a certain point, I think maturity caught up with me and said, okay, enough's enough. This is silly. You're tired. You know, you ain't going to be able to compete continually with yourself like this. So now, you know, then, you uh, again, you look for another vehicle to fill that void because it's always going to be there. You're always going to have a competitive list. So I play chess. If I'm playing somebody in chess, and you know how cats play chess, you talk mess, and and that's uh-huh. the that's the competitive thing. If you see people playing dominoes, it's competitive. If you play cards, it's competitive. Everything is competitive. Even the person in the car next to you that you don't know at the stoplight, when you look at each other, it's a competitive, unwritten, unspoken rule that when the light turns green, whose car going to be the first one to move? Now, I'm willing to admit that. You guys might not. But I'm willing to admit that. My car <laughs> might leave faster than the guy next to me. I'm looking at that, you know, and I'm like, okay, I have to pull myself back and say, oh, it ain't worth it. Let him go, you know. And that's that maturity that eventually shows up, but it don't show up for everybody. So the, the question is great because I can't give you a, a solid answer as to how I did that. It, I don't know if I've yeah. even done it yet. I think I'm still competitive. I, I think I'm still competitive, and I'm thinking I think I'm still looking for uh, a, my next competitive vehicle. You know, I think I'm looking for that. I don't know if that's right or wrong yet, but I still think I I still feel that I want to accomplish something, and and if I'm going to do it, I want to do it. I want to be the best at it. But is that wrong? No. no. Yeah, I think I think we all do it in a sense, um, and you yeah, know, because we, we all do. face challenges. Yeah, and I think I, don't, I definitely don't think it's wrong. I, well, I give up all that stuff, you, all that time you didn't put into, you know, becoming that way. I think with this process, we just learn how to manage it where it works in exactly. our benefit and not against us. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I, I definitely wouldn't give that up. I think that's a strength, actually, and that's why mm-hmm. people like hiring people like that. You know what I mean? Because they know yeah. they 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 going to work, and they, they want to win. But then, so. uh, and, and, and Terry, you know, talking about uh, Greg Odom, uh, you know, I'm a kid from Ohio, came from Akron, and, and understanding that competitiveness coming out of out of that competitive thing, I can understand his competitiveness, but the transitional stress for him is a little different because he's beating himself up because he didn't accomplish what everybody put on him. You know, like you said, seven foot, whatever, you're six eight, I'm six five, 
My son is I got a son that's gonna be taller than me and he's not a he's not a football player, but he's a big dude. And I told him at sixteen they're gonna be asking you everywhere you go, Do you play football? Do you play something, something? And I he plays the heck of a saxophone and I told him, Tell him you play the saxophone. <laughs> that's it, it that ends the that ends the stress in his life. You know. But for us who, who actually have are older and have played some stuff, we got to answer that question all the time. I'm, I'd rather tell them I'm very smart. Yeah, I played football, but I'm very smart. So don't, don't get the two twisted. You know, it's just because I'm this big guy, I can't put that stress on me that I didn't play in the NFL or I didn't accomplish. I, I, I leave that stress alone and replace it with here's these other accomplishments I have. And they're positive. So, and and once Mr. Odom finds out that thing that he can highlight as a positive, because he did have a career in the NBA, and now he can become a great coach. You know, so there's there's certain things that he can build upon. He just needs somebody in this corner to help him do that. And again, this is a vehicle that can help a lot of people talk about this kind of stuff. You know. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Just rambling. This, is, this has been a great conversation so far, awesome conversation. This is what we like to do. It's, it's funny that you mentioned coaching, and and yep. that's one of the things that we're talking about in this show, where we're talking about the effect of coaches and role models and also how um, athletes can transition into that role and actually be a help to those that are coming up behind them. But first, exactly. before we jump into that, I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to pay some bills here, and we're going to play a commercial, and we'll be right back. All right. Sports is a common denominator in the lives of people everywhere. Our celebration of sports creates an environment that gives athletes an amazing experience that enhances their lives. Athletes work long and hard to be the best at that thing that gives them so much elation. But what happens after the athlete is done? When a circumstance comes up and they're no longer able to play that sport? Whether it's the high school athlete who doesn't get that scholarship to go to the next level, or the college athlete that doesn't get picked in the draft, or even the professional athlete who now has to retire and find something else to do day to day. Many athletes struggle with this transition from competition to regular everyday life. This transition causes trauma, and that trauma often leads to depression, anxiety, anger, and even health issues. Author Terry Robinson noticed this problem and researched it and came up with the book, Athlete Transition Stress. This book deals with the subconscious programming and conditioning that goes on in an athlete's mind while participating in a sport. So if you or anyone you know are dealing with these issues related to transitioning from a sport, pick up the book, Athlete Transition Stress, and share your story in our global community online at www.letgroup1.com. Athlete Transition Stress is available on Amazon.com and on the LET Group website at www.letgroup1.com. Yes, and again, the book is called Athlete Transition Stress. Um, you've been hearing a lot about it um, over the last 30 minutes. The conversation has been amazing so far. And, JB, um, we yes. just really want to thank you for coming on to the show, man. And, and, and we just want to give you the floor for, for another few minutes. We know you got to go. We appreciate you giving us the time. And, and we just want to give you the floor just for another uh, couple of minutes. All right. Well, Eric. Terry and, and Lance, I applaud you for doing this, and thank you for having me on. I'll be back um, right now. And what I do now, I do a lot of business coaching and consulting 
with uh, businesses that are in existence and some small businesses that are trying to start up and and grow their companies. Um, I was a football coach here in Iowa and all of those things. So coaching is very important, and I think it's another way to alleviate some of that transitional stress. So with that said, I'm going to say thank you, and um, I will be back on um, in the near future. Keep up the good work. I'm proud of you guys. All right, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, well, thanks, hey, JB. Hey, JB. Yeah. Before you go, who you got this Saturday? The Wolverines or the Buckeyes? Ohio State. <laughs> 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 I thought so. <laughs> Did Chris, uh, Chris, hey, Chris Carter said it. Buckeye board and bread. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Yeah. Take care, man. All right. All right, All right man. Thank yeah. you again. You're welcome. Yeah, back to okay. our conversation, though. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> man. Go ahead, T. Do your thing, man. Do your thing. Yeah, yeah, man. Coaching, like we were talking about earlier, second to nine, man. Um, I know, like I said, I had a few good coaches and I had some bad ones, man. And uh, they they can, they can they make all the difference in the world. Uh, but like I said, one thing about a good coach, you know, he, he, he or she, they're going to teach, teach you about life. You know what I mean? They're going to teach you about life. And they're going to they're gonna be transparent. They're going to share experiences because that's what it's about. A lot of times we don't get those things from our own homes, and sometimes that's how we develop through sports because we're, we're being fed. When you're not being fed, I mean, you, you, you life is just that much more tough than having somebody there kind of mentoring you and coaching you along the way. And, uh, this, you know, all of us, I'm sure, have mentored people along the way and coached people also as well, off the court and sometimes on the court. Um, part of what we're doing now is trying to educate people. And uh, we, we, we definitely, uh, we, we're not speaking ill of anybody because what my experience has told me and taught me, even when I had bad coaches, a lot of them, they've experienced a lot of trauma as well. And uh, for a lot of years, I held, you know, I, I held some resentments towards some coaches, but now I have a better understanding of them because they're human beings. And a lot of times when they're, mean spirited or or have their own issues. A lot of times that's based on, you know, their life experiences, it's trauma. Of course when you're young you don't see those things, you don't understand those things. So you you make judgments and you create problems not just for yourself but for the team as well and the coach. And I and I can honestly say that I was that person that at a at a phase in my life and I, I I'm not saying that to brag on it. I wish I knew better but I didn't. Today I do. And so I want to um, I want not just help athletes, but the, but coaches as well, because a lot of them were athletes as well. And so even though the ones that weren't, they they they're people. We're all human beings. You know, everybody's transitioning. Everybody's dealing with something. And so coaches, you know, we we have to support them as well, because I mean, the title that they hold is is is, is like I said, it's it's big. It's almost bigger than life for a lot of kids. A lot of kids, because a lot of people don't. A lot of kids don't have those people in their homes, unfortunately. What do you guys think about what? What kind of coaches have you guys had in your lives, and how did you know? How did it, how did it turn out for you? Yeah, um, and, and, and I agree with you because coaches play such a huge role, um, and I think we've all experienced good and bad coaches, and it, and it seems like. Uh, you know, that stays with us for a long time, um, emotionally because, you know, you know, I remember back in the the bad coaches we had, a lot of times you feel like it affects your development because you always have that goal or dream to, you know, achieve something and then, you know, sometimes you feel like that coach sometimes got in the way. Um, but you know, I would like to dig a little bit deeper, um, because, you know, the good thing is in your book, you, you, you discuss this a little bit in Chapter 3. And the unique thing that we do is we combine, you know, sports with self-help. And really that's what we're trying to do is reach out to people and provide, you know, an opportunity for some help. And I think what you talk about in Chapter 3, it's somewhat more of a societal issue. I think uh, what you talk about is, you know, there's three different things. I think a lot of times young people – start off they deal with I mean there's a lot of divorce um, there's abandonment uh, and then more than often is you know people are struggling struggling financially so a lot of times you might have two parents at home and uh, but they both have to work to be able to uh, sustain the family 
And so a lot of times we're missing that piece, you know, that, that father who provides guidance, who is the protector. And a lot of times um, coaches become that, whether it's at the junior high level, uh, high school level, and sometimes the college level if you make, that, make it that far. But, uh, you know, I would, I would definitely like to get your guys' perspective on, because the way I see it is, you know, each level of basketball pre- presents something different. You know, when you're in junior high playing or AAU, traditionally it's about having fun. Obviously, you compete. You know, you keep moving up to two, J- JV to varsity, and that becomes a little bit more about winning. But you guys had a unique experience of playing at the college level. And I'm sure, you know, I, I never – to me, it seems like there's so much pressure on those coaches to win. Not isn't necessarily always about the kid, but sometimes becomes about self-preservation. I guess I would just like to hear you guys' experience you know, going up through the ranks and, again, each coach and the role they played and, you know, how they impacted who you are today. Well, I mean, uh, Eric, you want to play, Yeah, well, for me, you know, um, as I think back over my years, my my, my, uh, I, I, my my journey was a little bit different, I think, than Terry's because I really didn't start playing organized basketball until – uh, freshman sophomore year and uh you know I, I had a certain coach there and um for me um my father was really never around um at that time you know for whatever reason and uh so I, I was looking for affirmation uh from a man and 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 from someone who a man who could teach me some things could show me some things um, and, uh, one of the things with that is, um, I was looking for it from my coach because I felt that my coach was the one who could help me, um, to learn more, not only about basketball, but life. And, um, at that freshman, sophomore level, I was a bit disappointed because it really didn't happen. And the reason why is because my freshman, sophomore coach was coaching the girls, freshman, sophomores, and and other people as well. So they, you couldn't get that special attention paid to you. It was more so on a team basis. Then when I moved on to varsity, um, it was more the same. Um, you know, and, and then also, you know, special attention sometimes were paid to people who had, you know, played longer than I had. So um, although I wanted playing time and stuff like that, um, more than anything, I, I just wanted someone who could mentor me and, and show me the rope. And it didn't really happen at the high school level. And um, then I moved on to junior college. And I got a little bit of that from my junior college coach because he saw that I was very raw, um, not only in basketball skills, but in life skills. And then that's when I began to learn something. And and the, and the funny thing about it, Lance and Terry, um, my junior college coach looked nothing like me. He was a short country uh, white guy who had a, 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 a big-time uh, drawl or a big-time accent, country accent. And, you know, for me, by me coming from the city of Chicago and I watched all these things on TV, I thought that guys like that, you know, I was like, man, this dude ain't going to like me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm from the city and, I, and, and you know, I, I happen to be black. But he actually was um, one of my best coaches because he got on me. But then he would always he would tear me down, but he would always build me up, and and, and I kind of got some life skills and stuff like that from him. So that kind of set me up for the next thing, which was for me to move on to Drake, and that's where I met Terry, uh, moving on from junior college to Division One. And I mean, that was an experience in and of itself because I moved on to a place, and Terry could tell you a little bit more about that later, if he has an opportunity. Um, that was in turmoil. You know, we, we, we came in and, and, and we had a pretty good team. But, again, Lance, you hit on hit it on the head. He was more concerned about winning because he had not won in a while. And um, he really wasn't concerned about mentoring or, or, or kind of talking to us about being men and, and, and the things that men need to do about integrity, character, and all those types of things. And I longed for that. I wanted that. Although I may not have said that back then, and I may have acted, you know, out of character and crazy and all that stuff, Terry probably can attribute to some of the things I did back then that I'm not proud of. 
But now as I'm an older man, I realize that, you know, I did what I did um, because I really was longing for someone to mentor me, to coach me, to say, hey, do it this way, not that way, not just on the basketball court, but, you know, in life itself. So I, I've had a roller coaster as far as coaches and mentors are concerned. Um, Terry, what do you think? I mean, how? What, what's your story like? Well, you know, you it, it's ironic. You said you were looking for somebody to give you some direction. I was kind of the opposite. You know, I, I was kind of rebelling against authority most of the time, you know, especially by the time I got to college. In high school, I, I was still somewhat that way, but I think once I, once I got away from high school, that was my breakout. I was away from home. You know, and my father wasn't, you know, when I was young, my father wasn't around either. You know, he lived in a whole other state. And it was just my mom, and I had a stepfather, and we were cool. But when it came to another man, you know, I wasn't I wasn't open to them coming in and giving me any kind of instructions or directions, you know. And and I didn't realize that as doing those doing those years, but today I I can see it clear as day. So I was kind of resistant. I was kind of rebellious. And uh, when it came to authority, period. And, and and to me, that's what the coach appeared to be an authoritarian. You know what I mean? And they are. But like I said, uh, I think it, it just it would have taken a, a special person to, to reach me at during those years. It just would have, uh, because like I said, I just struggled with uh, with another man telling me what to do, and uh, and I think in the back of my mind it was a subconscious thing where I was thinking, you know, you're not my father, and if, if one of them would have said, well, where is your father? That would have really hurt my feelings. It probably would have woke me up. <laughs> so I think that's what that's what it was about for me. And I, because I, you know, it, it, but going back to one of my first coaches in junior high, I mean, he was, he was that person and we loved him and we, 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 you know, I mean, we did whatever he told us to do. We would run through a wall if he asked us to, but I, I never quite experienced that again. My high school coach was a real good, real good guy too, but he wasn't that guy. And definitely by the time I got to college, it was, it was a, it was a different thing. You know, we came to a program that wasn't necessarily winning. And, and and like you said, when you get to that level, it's about it's about job and everything else, taking care of their family, things that we had no clue of. Oh, I did. And 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 we had a we had a mid uh, major. I mean, you know, part of D one. So a lot of times when you have coaches at that level, they're trying to step up to the big the big time so they can make the big bucks. Exactly. So a lot of times they use it, they use those schools as a stepping stone. So there's a whole lot of layers to what we're talking about in terms of coaches and what their intentions are, what their motivations are. And and, and our last coach, as, as in doing our, doing our uh, my junior and senior year, who came in, I mean he was definitely look, using the school as a stepping stone. I you know uh, he, he he came in and, and pretty much told us you know this is you know I came from this particular place so <laughs> that's where my that's what I believe. You know what I mean? And, and when I heard that, I was I was turned completely off, and so I was rebellious the whole time, and not even really realizing it. But and and, and not to go into it because I, I told myself throughout this process I want to stay positive, and you know because they all experience it. Because it's easy for me to jump on that bandwagon and start talking about all the bad stuff. But I guarantee you one thing: there's more positive that came out of my experience than negative mm-hmm. by far, by far. The relationships. I talked to all Same you guys here. and Eric had a great weekend this weekend together. So I love it. Yeah, man. most definitely. I love it. I want to that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. But uh, so I mean, and, and, and the thing about it too, guys, is that um, it's funny that those those tough times really helped to shape me as a man. You know what I mean? It helped me to be who I am. Um, Although I went through some serious transition, and Terry, you talk about this a lot even in the book, um, where you state, you're like, hey, you know what, yeah, you're going through transition and it's tough, but then when you really look back at the times where you had to do things that were hard or had to go through a tough time, it actually molded you and shaped you and actually made you a little bit stronger so that later on down the line, you could accomplish some great things and also those things that you were going through actually kind of pushed you and prodded you to go to the next level, Lance. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, can you relate to that any? Uh, are you talking to Terry? No, I think you're talking to Lance. Okay. 
Yeah, 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 definitely I can relate to that. Um, you know, uh, Eric, um, a lot of times, you know, I look back to, you know, the first mentor I had was during the time that uh, um, my parents were going through a divorce. And like I said, it's 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 good having that, that role model because, you know, my dad ended up leaving to another, another city about two hours away. And, you know, his name was Coach Mager. He went out of his way to make sure that I was comfortable. He he made, you know, if you walk through the halls, he was also a teacher. He had just asked, you know, how's your day going? Um, you know, in practice, he was tough on me, but he was fair. I think that's any all any of us are looking for. And I, I think what's important, again, when we discuss this is, you know, the good thing is Terry described this in the book, and there's examples all over the place. I mean, he, he, he points out Dennis Rodman, he points out, Terrell Owens, you know, Ray Lewis, they all have their unique stories. And I think we all do in a sense. And that's why it's important that we share it um, because there is a healing process that takes place. Um, and I would encourage anybody to get a chance to go out and, and read some of the biographies of Terrell Owens, you know, in his childhood, um, you know, Ray Lewis and what drove him so much. You know, Dennis Rodman, you know, why he feels like he has some of the issues today that he's facing. Um, and there's a lot of listeners out there, a lot of people that have experienced sports, experienced coaches that uh, have played both a positive and negative role in their life. Uh, again, you know, coaches, for the most part, most part teach us, you know, what it's like to be a man, you know, to, uh, you know, how to treat other people, how to be respectful you know, how to, uh, you know, keep the straight and narrow. Because if you do get a little, off a little line, you know, who was there to, you know, straighten you out? And it was usually a coach because they wanted to make sure that uh, you, you you got to play that day. So, um, so yeah, it is interesting, the roles. And, and I think what Terry also talks in the book is being able to, you know, just write it on paper. And if you need to, you know, throw it in the fire, throw it in the trash, but at least get it out. So you're able to, yeah, I love that. to yeah. you know, trace it to, you know, and, and make those connections because um, and, and, those connections are important. And I would even encourage, because that's what we are, is we are, we are self-help. We're, we're here to, to help people to kind of guide them or walk through and help them walk through. And I would even, you know, encourage people to, you know, do a timeline. Uh, start when you were young. Make those associations. What was going on in your life? when you're playing sports, you know, who played a role in your life. And I, and I would guess a lot of times people can pinpoint to a coach um, and how important they were. So, you know, that was just kind of my take on it, guys. Um, again, I think it's uh, definitely worth worth discussing um, because, you know, that was our influence. Those were our the people that guided us. Well, most definitely. Um, at a young most age. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. yeah. Man, this – this is an awesome conversation, man. This awesome conversation. Uh, I, I, I want to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back to kind of wrap things up. But, man, guys, this this is something that's very powerful, and I know it's touching a lot of people. So we're going to go ahead and go to commercial, and then we'll be right back. The LET Group was established in 2016. Lance Conley, Eric Harrison, and Terry Robinson came together in agreement to build a model of integrity, hard work, and excellence. All three share a passion for health and creativity using outside-of-the-box thinking. They all have backgrounds in sports and entrepreneurship. Lance and Terry have over 50 years of combined experience in the mental health field, and Eric has over 25 years of experience in marketing and business. They came together to build a service that would literally change lives. The LET Group offers seminars, books, and other tools to encourage, educate, and enhance the quality of life for those in need. For more information on the tools and resources that the LET Group offers, visit www.letgroup1.com. Yes, yes, yes. The LET group. Uh, again, and Terry had mentioned it before, but LET is for Lance, Eric, and Terry. Um, and we came together 
to basically um, talk about different issues that not only affect athletes but, but affect people on a daily basis. Um, we understand that transition, um, and, and, and one of the things we're focusing on now more than ever is, is the, trans- the transition that athletes go through, but everyone goes through transition on a daily basis and, and all throughout their life. And one of the things that we work on within the LET group is to point out the fact that these transitions have caused some type of trauma in your life and then from there begin to talk about solutions. First of all, identifying what those traumas are and the things that the transition that caused them, and then from there try to point you towards solutions that can help you be the best person that you can actually be. So um, if you want more information on some of the other things that we're doing, of course the book, Athlete Transition Stress, is out right now and on Amazon.com. But also, um, if you go to www.letgroup1.com, um, you could look at some of the other things that we have going on, and you can really follow us and see what we're doing. Uh, Lance, I want to I want to give it back to you, man, because uh, you, you you've got a pretty uh, cool insight on this. Because, like I said, Terry and I are from uh, the the inner city in Chicago and different things of that nature. But Lance, you you, you give quite a bit. A quite a different perspective on this. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and hand it over to you and, and let you kind of, you know, drive the conversation now. Oh, no problem. And, and one of the things I'd like to point out, Eric, is, you know, as we were listening to JB um, early on, our guest, you know, one of the things that I heard him say was, you know, before listening last Tuesday to the show, that he never really was able to pinpoint or able to identify you know, what, what was going on, you know what I mean? He, he had the opportunity to listen to the show, and he's like, wow, you know, that's what that, that's what I was going through. That's uh, And was able to, to, to talk about the boxing, talk about the military, and talk about a combination of different stresses that he had to endure as he was making the transition out of those things. And I think what's important as we move through is, you know, being able to come up with solutions, as you said, Eric. Um, you know, how do you, what's the best way to make, make those transitions you know how do you how do you you know leave the military where it's very disciplined and uh you know you have uh you know people on 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 you all the time where you're getting up at six o'clock in the morning and they they tell you what to do and you know jb made a good point about you know the prison people coming out of the jail or prison you know some of the stresses they have to do so i think what we're talking about we're using sports and that's what our focus is because that's our backgrounds, but there's transitions out of jobs, out of, you know, marriages, out of, you know, a lot of different situations where people deal with, you know, trauma or grief, as Terry likes to say. And so, you know, as we move forward, but, you know, something I was interested in is because we were talking about coaches because you two did have a unique opportunity to play at the college level. You know, what that experience was when you had coaches recruiting you um, and they were telling you, you know, how they needed you you know, um, how bad they, they wanted you on the team and what that experience was, you know, going to the, the team and, you know, did that change at all? I know, Terry, we've talked about it where, you know, the assistant coach that recruited you actually left the first year you got on campus or the second year and all of a sudden, you know, that mentor, that person that you were connected with isn't there no more. I guess I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the, the recruiting process and the, the, the relationship with those coaches. And how important that was. Yeah, that's that's true. You know that because that's the person that you connect with. You know, mm-hmm. uh, person that you, you know you you you're looking to see when you get there. And when you get there, you know you 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 have no idea that this person is looking to move on. You know, you see him one day and then he's gone the next day. So it, I, I never really put those two things together until you just said what you said. Really, I know I've talked about it, but I never really put. Mm-hmm that together because that was a transition in itself because that was he was the main reason why I went there you know what I mean because of him and and when things got tough you know I was looking but he wasn't really giving me what I needed you know so I was pretty much on my own and I never really looked at it that way but that's that's kind of how it was and uh, you know during my four years there we probably had uh, 20 plus coaches 20 plus coaches, so there was very little consistency there, um, and that means not just head coaches, right. but assistant coaches. They were coming yeah. and going, coming and going yeah. like crazy. Exactly. 
And how did you like that with the program? Yeah. Cause, and I think that's important to note because, again, we want to stay as positive as possible, like you say. But, you know, I think a lot of college players especially, you know, have that experience, you know, because there are a lot of transitions with coaches in the, at, at that level of play because they're always moving around. You know, I know uh, I have a nephew, that a couple of nephews that are playing at that level right now, and that's one of the things they talk about is, you know, the disappointment, you know, dealing with, you know, maybe not getting to play as much as you want or maybe not liking the offense or feeling like the coach is restricting you um, because it's a whole different level. And I think when you love something as much as basketball or that sport that you're playing and then you deal with adversity, really probably for one of the first times because everything that you've experienced up to that point has probably been pretty positive because that's why you got to that point, you know what I mean, at the – junior college level or uh, D1 level. Um, I mean, was that your guys' experience? Um, I know you guys talk about all the coaches that left Trey because, you know, just some personal insight to you to your guys' experiences. You describe it to a T, you know. Uh, everything was fun up until then, you know. And, and that was just on the court, outside the court. Like I said, the relationships, we had, we had a ball together. But that was a, that was a, the, the the biggest challenge that I've ever had, you know, not being out there, not playing. And if I was playing, I wasn't playing the way I thought I should have been playing in terms of the style, you know, offense and all this different stuff, you know, because we come in and we have an idea of what we think it's supposed to be like, which is totally wrong. And when it's, when it, when you see that it's not that way, I mean, it's almost like um, trauma. It's almost like a, an experience of trauma. You just can't believe it. You can't figure it out. And that's kind of what we're talking about, you know, with these transitions. It's almost like, mm-hmm. you know, if you, you're in an area where it's completely dark, no lights on. I mean, it's going to be hard to get around that room. But if you turn this light switch on, I mean, you can get around and get to wherever you need to be. And so that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to be that light, you know, to get, so, so the people, when people hear this, and like you said, what's some solutions? You heard JB on the phone. I mean, if we could allow him to speak for an hour, if he had the time, he would have because he was getting some things out and out. And I think the more he talked, the more it started to come on. And so what our job is to try to get people to, to at least just communicate, talk. You know, we're going to jar you. And once we jar you, you start getting that information out. That's that's healing in itself, you know. And so uh, exactly. I, I definitely believe it because I'm experiencing it myself. Um, I, I, I feel that every time we have a show, guys, and, and Terry, it, it's something that came to mind as you were talking. We talk about the transition, and, and we talk about, you talked about how we went to college, things weren't the way that we thought it would be, and, and the whole system was different. Everything was different. You know what I mean? It was, it was a, a, a huge transition for us. But then I even like it because I've had an opportunity to kind of do some things in corporate America. And uh, by doing those things in corporate America, hey, Terry, when you go into certain environments and certain atmospheres, man, it's like, hey, it, it, it's tough because, you know, you got to change and you have to conform kind of to what the system is. Exactly. And that's a transition in and of itself. And it's very hard to do that sometimes when you're going in any different environment, no matter what it is. We only have, you know, a couple minutes left, but we got a caller that it just came in. And I think, Terry, they're trying to let you know that they were trying to get in. So I'm going to bring the caller in right now, and we're going to let them speak. So so hold on one second. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Who are we speaking to? Hello? 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 Yeah, I guess, I guess the caller's not on right now. Hello? Okay, yeah, somebody yeah, called in. Here. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe they'll try back. Okay, yeah, they'll try back. Okay, okay. But, yeah, we got about five minutes left. If they'll try back, we'll try to get them in. But like I said, man, there's always an adjustment in every area of life. And and I'm going to tell you something. Athletics actually kind of prepared me for those adjustments and those transitions. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Well, I, I you know, just no question about it. That's why you – Everybody wants to hire somebody that was that played sport. Everybody does. I know when I own my business, that's what I was looking for. I, I mean, I like other people too, but athletes, you know, they just know how to handle 
tough situations because they've been in plenty of them. And if you've played, you know, uh, so many years of your life, I mean, you, you, you're going to face some adversity because that's what it's all about. And you find yourself knocked down, you get back up. And so that's kind of the mindset. It's a conditioning. And, you know, and, and that's, a, that's one of the greatest things about athletics. But unfortunately, sometimes when we're transitioning, we don't realize that, and it starts to work against us. And, and that's what we're trying to point out. I believe if we continue to have these conversations, people continue to talk and listen, then it, they, they, they start understanding life a lot better. Because, like you said, he, nothing is, you know, is the same, so we have to change. You know, who, who said that it's supposed to be the way that we thought it was supposed to be? I mean, that's really arrogant <laughs> when you think about it. But that's how I can say it. Exactly. And, Terry, changing is one of the hardest things anyone could ever do in their lives. But we're asked to do it on a daily basis. Change is hard, man. I don't care what nobody says. If someone sits there and tells you change is easy, run as fast as you can because they don't know what they're talking about. Seriously. I Lance, agree. we got a couple of minutes left. Lance, we got a couple of minutes left, man. How do you how you want to try to wrap this thing up? We got a couple of minutes. Yeah, let's. Uh, you know, we got a couple of minutes, and you know, again, I think the main thing is we're trying to communicate and, and, and try to provide a platform for you know kids and even parents because, like I said, uh, I have a nephew now that's kind of going through it a little bit. He's a junior um, in college feels like he should be playing some more, doesn't get to play as many minutes. And, uh, you know, I talked to my brother, and, uh, you know, what he's trying to figure out is, you know, how do I communicate to him to make this experience as a positive as possible? Because my motto is, and I think it starts at a young age, and that's where I, I would encourage the coaches and mentors and people like that is really teach the young people to use, sports as a vehicle to get where they need to go. Use basketball to get to where you want. Don't let basketball use you. And I think, uh, you know, that, that that has a lot of meaning because, like, sometimes we we use basketball to think we're going to get someplace, and sometimes it's not the place that we really plan on going. Um, and then we have to deal with the disappointment. But I, I believe if, if you use sports, football, music, all those different things that we participate in or do, Use that to get where you where you where you want to go um, and where you need to go. Um, don't let those those sports or the uh, activities use you um, and, and create a, a bad situation for yourself. So I'll just kind of end on that note, and I'll let yeah. you kind of jump in and uh, conclude it. Yeah, that's, I that's, agree with that, Lance. Point, Lance. Go ahead, Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, yeah, I, agree. I, I just want to bring you. I know we got. I just want—I agree with that, but the, the issue is we just have to go more in depth about that because people always say that, mm-hmm. you know, don't let it use you. But what we're doing mm-hmm. is we're talking about prevention stuff. We're gonna put some more meat into that, so we don't just come out with a thing. We're gonna talk about the whole experience, and then it makes sense because mm-hmm. people always say that, you know. And that's that's what I want to add because you're right. That is true. Don't let it use you. But that's as far as it usually goes with most people. That's all they hear. But with this conversation yep. that we're having. With the book, the materials that we're talking about, curriculums, then it makes sense. Then they actually get it. So yeah, yeah that's all. You go on here, close it yeah. out, man. Huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, man, that's a great note to close on because the one thing that we always want to talk about too, and Lance and Terry, I know you guys agree with this. We are a work in process as well. We we are not by any means saying that we're experts and we have gotten over this. We live through this day to day, and, and guys, with a yes or no answer, every time we have this show, and every time we breach and talk about these subjects, are you guys being changed? Are you getting better? We're even talking about this stuff. I know I am. You know, I mean, it, it, it's helping me. I mean, Lance, is it helping you? Oh uh, yes, no, no doubt about it. It, yeah. it, it brings and awareness I mean, things up. I, you know. Exactly, exactly. And Terry, the same for you, right? Yes. Yeah, man. So um, what what we want to do is, is we want to continue this conversation um, over time. And, and we have a, a, a place on our website where you can actually put your story out there and you can tell us your story just like JB did. So go to www.letgroup1.com and click the link that says Transition Stories and submit your story. 
so that we can be able to share these stories and we all can grow together. So with on that note, um, we're going to end the show. And, man, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Life's Twist. Thank you for joining us on the Life's Twist show. When you have a chance, please check out our website at www.letgroup1.com and see all of the things that we'll be doing over the next several weeks. In the meantime, have a great week, and we'll see you soon.